Yeah, mind. Okay. Update on the sim stuff. Uh, I haven't been able to test this yet. This is basically how it's all going to work out. I got a little cheap on this. I should have used a terminal block at some point because I have more than six connections reversed sort of screwed up this whole beautiful system where I've got six switches going to the cat5 and then the seventh one's doubled up and then I need the two commons so yeah but that's all that's going to be in this box is going to look like that I'm going to straighten the wires out obviously and that's going to here and I've got well I haven't done anything with this here's the box though Container store for like, I don't know, dollar thirty. Two dollars, I think. Detachable tops, a little clip lock. It's a, you know, soft plastic, but I'm not gonna uh I don't plan on throwing this in my road case and then going on a trip across the country until October. Blah. Now, this this is what I've actually been working on. I managed to get this is how I've decided I'm going to uh hook it up. These brackets weren't intended for this. I was gonna. I was planning on having some sort of crazy system that came off and then went back and attached to the stock G27 mounts. And screw that. And I'm not even using the second uh, bearing. I had two of these, and I'm just a retiring one. This one will go on the wheel side, and I will just use the actual bearings inside the G27 because I have a flashlight. The hole there is the opening in this uh, heavy thing is big enough to fit the entire shaft of the G27, which uh, wrist strength failing is over here. I removed the, uh, the board, the board's up there. Uh, simply because I don't want to be banging it around and have it exposed and drop it. And This I feel like I won't break, just dangling wires. Plus I wanted to see how the uh, G27 actually functioned and I couldn't do that without it. And if you look on the side there, you can see there is this floating member. I had considered cutting out the entire casing of the G27, just using the motor assembly and whatever else is needed. Unfortunately, this piece, which I believe all it does is dictate the 900 degree lock, uh, is attached to this sliding bit and that sliding bit is the actual plastic for this housing so that sort of sucked that idea out of the wall and the way it works you get some light in there that's centered and it's got that big keyway on top and when you turn it in one direction the keyway just misses that hole comes all the way around and hits it goes all the way around the other way and just misses that hole and then hits so and here's the wire that goes to the steering column that for the buttons, and I'm not sure how I'm dealing with that yet. That's going to be interesting to try to get up here. So yeah, this bit here fits entirely into this, and I'm going to build some sort of cam assembly that, you know, three fingers. It's going to slide in here, use these three, they're not really screw terminals, but uh, screw mount sockets, whatever you want to call these large plastic cylinders that go all the way down this like five inch shaft. And I'm just going to have something that goes inside here and it touches all three of these and probably gets real tight and it lock washes and everything. And then it's just going to cam in there. And that means it'll work even on a slightly off angle. This will just rotate and rotate the whole shaft down here, which this is the shaft. Half inch threaded rod. I've got tons of lock washers and regular washers and big washers and nuts. I'm not sure what I'm doing with this three quarter inch rod yet. May not have to use it. I have to decide what I'm doing on the bearing end. So, this is what I accomplished. I accomplished brackets on, again, high, high density polyethylene, which is what cutting board is, but I'll call it high density polyethylene because that sounds professional are mounted to this and then two holes drilled here that go to unused portions this is where the, the uh, clamps are obviously the clamps aren't going to be needed so i got plenty of space to fit those and it took me about an hour 
to loosen everything up, get it in place so that this shaft fit perfectly, and then tighten it down, and then untighten it and readjust so that everything here fit perfectly. And I believe this will hold it just fine. Once you get the eight mount screws all around, that isn't going to move or jiggle. And it'll actually be, I put this foam, this is speaker surround foam. I got a 50 foot roll of it over here. We're doing speaker building. And this is the best stuff you could have for anything. I mean, just, oh, my, my door closes real loud. Stick some of this on there. It was like $8 for 50 feet. I need to get some more of it in different, different widths. This is the half inch stuff. And I just lined the entirety of everything with it. So that this is not gonna get scratched and it's gonna be slightly damped. I'm, you know, it's still a solid connection here to a solid connection here to a solid connection here. But all those rattlings that you get at a G27 in like R Factor 2 should go away. Or at least be so far into my desk I don't really hear them. Uh, so button box, G27, G27 heavy thing. I've got all the stuff I needed for uh, switching diodes for doing the button box uh, distribution network. Blue is going to be for actual buttons. Orange is going to be for analogs and these yellow ones I'm going to use for the load cell. So everything will be pretty and color coded in a clear box that will look cool. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And I'm probably just going to crazy glue everything down or I don't know if I'm a pile hot glue. Piled hot glue doesn't look sexy. Oh, and here I had to buy one of these. Uh, of course, my cutoff wheel, which is down there, is the one with the screw head, like a flat Phillips fucking screw head. And you just tighten it on, all oh, good, and you break your wheel and you gotta undo it eight times. It's a drummer one I got. It cost me like $22 for five wheels and the actual adapter. But it's like an instantaneous on off thing, and it's really nice. I'll be needing that to cut all of the bolts, which are here. I need, these are M8s by one and a quarter, along with all the machine uh, catches for this stuff. And the only thing I need now is yeah, these bits here I need to tap. So I gotta order an M8 by one and a quarter so I could tap these so that I could pull this off and take this piece of cutting board which is already marked 45 millimeters around and then bolt that into there and then bolt this back on it so this will all be permanent so I gotta order that and testing stuff and music <coughs> Baseballs. See if that gets removed from YouTube. Okay. I finished the box. I can't test this end. Let me explain the box. Bottom our board. Get real close with the GoPro will handle it. Bottom our board. This is the load cell version. Um, these 12 connectors are all buttons headed to three Cat5 connectors, where the first six are all shared for all three, I have the wire underneath, and then these are the other end of the matrix, these six, and it goes two, two, and two. So when I plug in a Cat5 here to any the button box, shifter, and then there's just buttons, I get one, two, three, four, five, six, Reverse is seven, and the starter button here is eight. The other four are not used in this. So I could add four more. I had these, which I'm not sure if I'm going to reuse. Because they were bulky and stupid. But it is where my ignition used to live. Damn. Bulk leg reverse. The resting spot at first. Starter. And I could swap this out. Okay, now instead of it being one through 
8, it's 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 is reverse, start is 20, and the same if I move it over. The last one is the connection that you could use a uh, deep hat on, a deep hat, hat switch. So I'm not even going to bother with that. I don't think I have a hat switch in my future. So let's close this. How nice that is presented. Um, so this side, the orange ones are analog inputs. If I ever made just a, a knob box or a throttle assembly or pedals, I'd use that. And then I get one load cell, which is the uh, yellow one, which is just wired straight from the load cell with doubled up wires. So white orange and orange are ground. And then older on the other side, white, brown, and brown are five volt and so on and so forth. So four to eight. And then eventually, if I ever use that, I'll probably be an emergency brake and it'll be on this side. And we got the USB plug that's right there. Hot glue, crazy glue, that foam I was telling you about, finished. The box would have probably been about two inches smaller. Just squeeze the hell out of everything like that. And I didn't really feel like doing it. This is perfect. I even left a little hanger hook to hang it like that. A little lame thing. And I gotta fix. Yeah, that just sticks on there. I never had a. Th I can thread this and put a real wood ball on, but I don't have this size, eight inch and three quarter. I have two inch, an inch and a half. It's amazing that it doesn't fall off. One of it. That's next.